In this podcast, we'll look at the divide and conquer strategy, and that will be exemplified by a sort called merge sort. Okay, how does divide and conquer work? Well, you have a problem. You might have some pieces to it. And first you divide that problem into a bunch of smaller problems that have fewer pieces. You conquer means to solve these subproblems, and then you combine. So if the dividing broke it down into pieces, the combining now brings it back up together to be a solution to the whole problem. Now, how does this actually accomplish anything? Well, eventually the dividing has to get down the problems that are of such small size that they can just be solved directly. Either that they're so small that there is no problem to solve, such as sorting a list of size one, or the problem is small enough that you can use a brute force approach to solving the problem. So this is the approach that merge sort is going to take, applying this strategy to sorting. Uh, often in divide and conquer, we will see um, the dividing is actually dividing things in half, because that's the most efficient way to quickly break down something of size n into eventually lots of little problems of size 1. So that's the approach that merge sort is going to take. So let's bring up merge sort and see how it does this. Here is the merge sort procedure. It's going to take an array A and so sort a subrange of it from P to R in that array. So if P is equal to or greater than R, there's nothing to sort. You've gotten down to an array of size 1 or 0. So we only go if P is less than R. Here, we're going to divide the array in half by finding the midpoint between the two indices, P plus R divided by 2. But it's got to be an integer, so we're going to take the floor. That will give us a way to dive into the middle of the array. And then we will recursively call the same procedure to sort the array on the part from P to Q and to sort the array on the part from Q plus 1 to R, and then we will merge them together. So like many recursive solutions, it looks kind of mysterious. It's hard to see where the work is done because we're solving the problem just by calling it itself. But actually, of course, a lot of the work is done in the merge procedure that we'll look at in a minute. Just intuitively, what it does is it takes the two lists that result from the recursive calls, and it looks at the beginning of each list and just copies the smaller one over into a new list, like as if you had two piles of cards and you needed to merge them in order. You just keep taking the top card off and comparing them. But let's look at a quick example using a small set of data here. I'm going to draw it in a different direction, and the book draws this example. But um, Let's say we want to sort this data. Uh, so we first divide it in half. Let's say P is 1 and R is 8. And so Q is going to end up dividing it in half here. So we're going to have two recursive calls. And I'll draw those out in blue. So one recursive call is going to be on this part of the array. And then the same thing happens. We divide it in half. And so another recursive call is on this part of the array. And uh, we divide that in half, and another recursive call is on this part of the array. And of course, P is no longer less than R, uh, so we're done. Same thing happens here. We're done. And now we're going to merge. We've got two sublists, and we're going to copy them back up to where we were before by looking at the first item on each sublist and finding the smaller one. So of course, the smaller one there is the two. That will get copied back up first, and then the 5 will get copied back up. So if I can just show that like this. And a similar thing happens over here, where the, the 4 and the 7 were uh, each sent off to recursive calls separately, and then ex examined individually, and the, the lists were merged back up together. Uh, I, don't, I won't write out the details there. So what we end up with here are two lists, the, uh, the 2, 5 list and the 4, 7 list. And now we need to, let me get rid of this 
Now we need to merge those two lists. So we do the same thing. We just look at the first item of each list, say which one's smaller, copy that one up first. Uh, then the next smaller one will be that. We're going to copy that up. And the next smaller one will be that. We're going to copy that up. And then finally that one. So I'll just go ahead and write that out. One thing you might note is that merge sort takes twice the amount of memory because you have to have a separate array for all this copying. And I just made a mistake there. Okay. So as a result of this, we now have a sorted sublist. And the same thing is going to happen over here where this list will be divided in half and then that first half will be divided in half and so on. And eventually it ends up with a one, two, three, six. And so we will have um, these two sublists both embedded in the same array, but then you know, a pointer starts out at the beginning, an index at the beginning of each of these arrays and says who's smaller and copies, say, the one back up first and then the two, and then there's another two. You could have redundant data. We'll go up here and so on. So I think you get the idea there. I'm going to take a quick look now at how the merge code works to convince you that this actually can do something. So I'll bring up the merge procedure. And we'll discuss what's going on here. OK, so what's going on here? Merge is given an array and two indices in this indicating the, the portion of the array that it should be concerned with. And then another index indicating where the two portions, where essentially the two lists of me, to be me merged are divided. So the array ranges from P to Q. And somewhere in the middle there is an R that is the boundary between the two portions to be merged. So what does this do? Well, n1, n2, it's getting the sizes of the two. It's getting the sizes of the two portions to be sorted. OK, then, what do lines 3 to 9 do, all of these lines? We can see that we're getting new arrays. So as I said, merge requires uh, double the storage because it's got to copy stuff into another array. Uh, so it's going to define two arrays, one for the left list and one for the right list. And then this is going to simply assign to the left array some element out of the main array. And this assigns to the right array some element of, of the, out of the main array. So it's copying over into L and R the portions that belong to the two lists. And then it's sticking at the end of those two sets of data a special symbol that's called a sentinel. This is actually you know, the largest possible number that we're going to assume is not part of the data. And that will mark the end of the list. OK, so to summarize what these two things do, this essentially copies to new arrays. And this part here marks the end. Now we have initialization of two um, indices to run a loop. So what do these lines do? Well, this is the merge. We're looking at the two lists. We're looking at the left list and the right list, the very the, the next element of each list. And we're saying, if the left one's smaller, copy that one into the main array and increment it. Otherwise, the right one is either smaller or they're equal. Copy the right one into the main array and increment the index for the right array. So it's just stepping through the two lists and copying them back in. So this actually does the merge. OK, so you could try to reason about the correctness. Use a loop invariant, uh, of course, to prove the uh, correctness of this. But we're not going to go into that much detail. I hope it's pretty clear that this is a correct algorithm. So there's a, another example of the merge in detail on, um, in my web notes. But we're going to look right now at a fun example going to our folk dancing page. OK, here comes the data. Initially, this would just be one array of numbers. They've already pre-divided them into half by uh, the color of the costumes, of course. So merge sort. We'll divide the array in half and call itself recursively on this half. Now it's dividing in half again. It's an odd number, so we get different amounts in each half. And it's dividing a half again, calling itself recursively on these two halves. Now this is the merge happening fairly quickly here. 
that half is sorted. Divide in half here. Here's the base case. This list doesn't have to be sorted. Divide this list in half. They don't have to be sorted, so they're going to compare to each other. This is the merge. Copy the smaller one first, then copy the rest out of the other list. Now we have to merge this list with this list. So the first elements of the list come out, compare themselves, copy the smaller one. Compare the next elements of the list, copy the smaller one, and then copy over the rest until you hit the sentinel. Finally, we're going to merge this list here with this list here. So the first element of each, the 2 and the 0, will come out and compare. Copy the smaller one over back into A and keep going. So you can watch the other half on the website. Well, that is your introduction to merge sort, an example of the divide and conquer strategy. And next we will analyze merge sort correctness.